up everyone and welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to show you how I did this drawing of a white horse using white charcoal on black paper. So the materials I'm using in this video is going to be a white general's charcoal pencil, a black general's charcoal pencil, some blending stumps, got a couple of different sizes there, some kneaded eraser, a paintbrush what I use just for some light blending where I don't want to blend it too much, a mono zero eraser, a ruler because this horse has got reins on and I'm not good at straight lines, and this cheap hard charcoal pencil that I got in a set of graphite pencils and then some frisk black card. I will as usual have all these supplies listed in the description so you can head on down there and have a look if you're wanting to buy some of these supplies for yourself and try out this technique for yourself. So with me being right handed I'm starting up in top left so that I don't have to lean on any work that's already been done and you can see that I'm using a sheet of glassine paper as well so that I'm not leaning directly on paper. Your skin oils can get on paper and ruin it a little bit or smudge your charcoal around and what have you. So I'm just using that there. So all I'm doing at the moment is just adding a first layer of white charcoal to ears and forelock area. I'm just going to work in sections at the moment so that I'm not trying to do too much at once. Where you've got any hair directions, I'm just trying to follow that with strokes at charcoal, especially on forelock area and what have you. You don't have to worry about covering up black paper at minute because it's going to all get covered up when you blend it with stump. So now I've come in with blending stump and I'm just going to go over all of that and just blend it all. And again where you've got hair directions I'm just going to try and move it in direction at hair growth you know like on the forelock and that kind of thing. And also on top of head I'm just extending it down a little bit where I've stopped with actual charcoal I'll still blend it a little bit further down. So when I finish blending that obviously it will dim it a little bit when you first put charcoal on it it's nice and bright and white but then when you blend it it, it sort of takes away that brightness so I come in with another layer and start adding some more charcoal to your, your brighter areas that you want to be really white and then just build up on them layers and start adding some details and hair strokes and things like that. A tip to this technique is that really you're only painting or drawing the highlights depending on what medium you're using. Obviously I'm using charcoal but you can do this technique in other mediums as well if you use black paper and use any kind of medium where you can put it on black paper. And all you're doing is putting in the highlights and then letting the paper be the darks so anyway where it's like black you just leave it black because that's what coloured paper is and then obviously as your values go up you just add more and more medium and then you make it the brightest where you've got your highlights so sometimes when you've got a, a dark subject like say a black labrador you'd literally just be drawing the highlights and a lot of rest of it would just remain black or nearly black because that's all that's going to be visible really I mean in this video I'm doing a white horse, I know they're actually called grey uh, because they're born black and they gradually get lighter as they get older but from an artist's perspective I'll just refer to it as a white horse in this video. So obviously there's going to be a lot more of him that I'm going to actually be drawing on because we him being white I'm going to have to put a lot more charcoal on this to make it you know white as a white subject than I would have to do if it were a black subject like a black horse or a black labrador. I have done a video with a black and white horse in you know in this technique with white charcoal on black paper. I'll link to that above and you can go and have a look and you can see the differences between the two horses and how I go about making them look the way that they do. So anyway as I move on to more sections I'll just say a few words about the subject himself. He's an Arab and he was called Zeus and he belongs to somebody that I've known for quite some years now and not because of animals. I actually know him through growing cacti because I'm actually a, a cactus grower <laughs> basically. <laughs> Some a lot of you might not know about me but yeah uh, I, I grow a specific type and I actually hybridise them and that's how I knew his owner and I always knew that she had um, this horse and he died in 2014 now so he's been gone some time nearly a decade so 
she's uh, decided to have a drawing done of him as a tribute. She wanted a photo where he didn't have his bridle on, uh, but she couldn't find any, so we just had to go with this one. I'm not a big fan of doing bridles and what have you. I, I just prefer to do fur and that kind of thing. I'm, I'm not into all the doing like little buckles and, and that kind of thing. It's not uh, my cup of tea, but end of day, when, when the subject has passed away, you've just got to go with what you've got and that's it. And that's why I had to use a ruler on this occasion as well, because I'm no good at straight lines, like I said. So you can see I'm adding first layer to alt front of his face and just above his eyes in centre, horses have a point where all the hair seems to grow from. It's like a little spiral and the hair all seems to radiate out from that point before going in its you know, final direction, dark face or whatever. So I'm paying attention to making sure that I do the strokes in the direction that the hair is actually growing in and including that little spiral that you can see. And then obviously down front at face, I've always got a bit of a groove going on, so it's going to be a little bit darker in that groove and then look a bit lighter on, on your ridges at either side because there's going to be more light hitting them than going inside that, especially when you've got light coming from the side and it can't quite get into that groove as much as what it can hit them two ridges at either side. But otherwise, I'm following the same drill as before on that top section. I just seem to be doing like in sections between different parts at bridle at a time. So yeah, I'm just building up layers like before, doing that initial layer, blending it and then adding some more whites and then blending that and using needed erasers if I just need to erase any at blending and that kind of thing. So here you can see that I've come in with a black charcoal pencil and the reason I do this is because sometimes when you're wanting to do smaller dark details it's difficult to get them precise just using erasers alone and relying on paper to do it. So I do try to be really sparing with a black charcoal pencil in these white charcoal you know, drawings on black paper. But sometimes it's necessary, you know, to get a little bit more definition in small dark details such as the eye on this horse. I also needed it a little bit on the bridle straps to get the edges of them nice and sharp again because they did get smudged over a little bit by the white charcoal and as I say you can't get a nice defined edge just using a razor alone. So I'm currently working on muzzle and the muzzle took the longest of any part of this drawing I think because it's got lots of details going on like little wrinkles and pimples and obviously your nose and your mouth and that kind of thing, little whiskers and all them sorts of things going on. So yeah, it does take longer to, to do muzzle on an horse. I think it's probably the most complex part of an horse portrait. And I were also careful to make sure that I preserved a little bit of black paper showing through, not quite so bright white, just underneath that nose band on bridle because it's casting a little bit of a shadow there. So you don't want to be uh, doing that uh, bright white all the way up to the nose band, otherwise you'd lose that shadow there. So I'm just going to gradually move to it right now that everything on left is being completed. So on to cheekbone and finish these straps off on that bridle and do all them little buckles and that kind of thing. And then on to it neck and just using the same techniques as what I've already shown you on rest. Just paying attention to the direction of the hair growth, especially on neck and what have you because there's some changes in direction they are going on as well. And also just behind that cheekbone there's some little wrinkles and creases where the horse is bending his neck which often happens when the, the bending the neck is a little bit more and then also the muscles will tend to bulge out on the neck so you, where they bulge out most you probably want it to be lighter and then when, when they where you go inwards and you get your, your contours you probably want to leave it a little bit darker and then it gives the impression of actual muscles and definition in neck rather than it all just being plain white. And then one of the last things you see is me using that ruler to do them reins because they're quite straight so and as I've said a few times already I'm no good at straight lines. 
So if you've enjoyed this video, please get a like and if you haven't subscribed then consider doing that as well. You can support me via super thanks because every little bit helps me to continue this channel and keep putting more content out for y'all. I will have another acrylic painting video coming out soon as well. So until then, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!